This historic walking tour of the south end of Navy Street has been prepared by the Oakville Historical Society. Along the way, you will see the street as it looks today and as it looked in the past and meet some of the original owners of the houses. Think of this as Street View and Facebook of the 18 and 1900s. The walk starts on the shore of Lake Ontario, past the very south end of Navy Street on the east side. Walk past the William Chisholm historic plaque to the end of the walking path. You should be looking at the entrance to the harbour as the tour begins. Pause the video until you arrive at this spot. Instead of today's park and the pleasure boats going in and out of the harbour, in the late 1800s you would be looking at a bustling commercial and passenger port. This was the way for people and goods going to and coming from Toronto, Hamilton, Niagara Falls, the United States, and other ports around the lake. At one time, the area in front of you would have been piled with wood to burn in ship's boilers. But by the 1870s, most steamers burned coal, and the town wanted this to be a park. They asked the owner, R. K. Chisholm, the son of the town's founder, if he would sell it. Mr. Chisholm proposed a trade. The town would have the lakefront if they closed the sections of Front Street and Water Street between King Street and Navy Street, adding those lands to the Irkless estate. The town agreed and the shoreline became Lakeside Park. Looking east, the park path was once a small road leading past a beautiful summer home built in 1900 that was named Mount Vernon after the country home of George Washington. Turn to look north at the playground and you will see the home with St. Jude's Church Tower in the background. The home was owned by John A. Chisholm, who lived from 1861 to 1903 and his wife, Amelda Beeler Chisholm. They and their daughters, Juliet and Hazel, lived in the United States and used Mount Vernon as their summer home. John Chisholm was a very successful inventor and businessman. He developed a way of getting peas out of their pods. Before his invention, it was so much manual work to shell peas that canning them commercially was often done using slaves. He and his partner manufactured machines in New York State, like the one in the picture, that in one operation stripped the pods from the vines, shelled and sorted them. We can get an impression of the wonderful we can get an impression of the wonderful interior of Mount Vernon from this photo of a family wedding. Sometime after John's death in 1903, his wife and family stopped using the house, and it was rented to other people. It burned down in 1928, and the town acquired the property sometime later for non-payment of taxes, adding the land to Lakeside Park. Start walking north on the sidewalk past the Lakeside Park sign and up to the corner of Navy Street and Front Street. As you walk, you will pass the fine Irkless estate, which now houses the Oakville Museum. This walk does not discuss the history of the estate. Please drop into the museum after this walk for a visit and a tour. Admission is free. Pause the video until you have crossed Front Street and are in front of 19 Navy Street. Continue walking slowly up Navy Street Pause to match the video and your pace. David Patterson was born in Ireland in 1807 and came to Canada when he was 18 or 19. By 1827, he was working at William Chisholm's shipyard and in building the piers for the harbour, but he soon turned to building houses. He purchased this property from Chisholm and built a two and a half story clapboard house. The basement had a large stone oven 
that was used to bake bread until the 1860s. The pine floorboards he used are up to 26 inches wide and are unsquared, still showing the original tapering of the trees. He and his wife, Agnes Griggs, had eight children. Around 1866, he bought the lots just south of Front Street, in what is now Lakeside Park, built a smaller home, and rented out this house. It was sold in 1866 for $1,620. In the late 1870s, it was renovated, including replacing the clapboard with brick and adding the balconies. The Pattersons are buried in the Oakville Cemetery beside the grave of Agnes's father. The 29 Navy Street lot was purchased by John Moore in 1834 from William Chisholm, and he built this house. His wife was Sarah Griggs Moore, whose cousin Agnes we just met next door. In 1838, Sally's father, Barnett Griggs, owned the house and leased it to various tenants before he converted it into a large hotel named the Frontier House. It served steamboat passengers arriving and leaving the harbour and was advertised as the largest and best accommodations in Oakville, with no expense spared in the fittings of the place. Across the street, there were long drive sheds where patrons could leave their horse teams for the day. It was an hotel from 1853 to 1860. Sarah died in 1870 in childbirth at the age of 26, and her daughter died 10 days later. She is buried beside her father Barnett in the Oakville Cemetery. In 1870, Robert Swanton Appleby and his wife Ella Richardson Appleby bought the house. You may think that it looks a bit small for an hotel, but in 1906, the building was cut in half and the north section became a separate house around the corner at 154 King Street. 41 Navy Street has not changed much in recent years. Captain Robert Wilson purchased this lot from William Chisholm in 1832. His brother, Captain William Wilson, bought the next lot north. The Wilsons arrived in Canada in 1817 when their recently widowed mother came from Ireland with her ten children. The two brothers married two sisters from Nelson, which is now Burlington. Captain Wilson and this home are mentioned in the historical novel In Any Known Blood by Lawrence Hill, who was a resident of Oakville for a time. On the walk south, we will pass the bookmark plaque unveiled by Mayor Burton and Lawrence Hill. Moving on, we arrive at 45 Navy Street, the home of Captain William Wilson, the second of three brothers who became ship's captains. This house is one of the oldest in Oakville and is said to have been built by William Chisholm. It was originally located on the top of the bank, overlooking Sixteen Mile Creek, at what was then the end of Front Street. It was moved here around 1859, which is why it appears to be sideways to the street. Captain Wilson owned numerous properties in the area, including a home on Trafalgar Road that was called Mariner's Home because of his custom of bringing ill and homeless mariners home with him for the winter. The Wilsons are buried very appropriately in Oakville Cemetery on the very edge of the bluff overlooking Sixteen Mile Creek. The house at 53 Navy Street is older than the 1859 date on the plaque. This was the home of Captain Samuel McGiffin, who came to Canada in the 1840s. The house was built in the early 1840s and the McGiffins likely rented it for some years 
before purchasing it in 1859. Samuel McGiffin's son, Captain John McGiffin, was also a mariner and lived in the home after his father died in 1861. Captain John learned seafaring from his father, going out on the lake when he was 12 and becoming a sailing master at just 18. He served on or captained a long list of vessels, including the steamer Chippewa, the largest vessel on Lake Ontario, and was chief mate, serving under Captain George Brock Chisholm on the White Oak, a schooner launched from Oakville Harbour on July 1st, 1867. This model of the White Oak was built as a Canadian Centennial project in 1967 and is on display at the Oakville Historical Society. In all his years of sailing throughout the Great Lakes, including supply runs to the many lighthouses, he never lost a boat or a sailor. Later in his career, he was the Commodore of the Niagara Navigation Company, which ran steamers between Toronto and Niagara. Sixty-five Navy Street, as well as the adjoining lot on William Street, were bought from William Chisholm by William Johnson Sumner in 1831 for 20 pounds, or about $80 at the time. He was the son of Thomas Sumner, a soldier who fought under General Wolfe at the taking of Quebec City in 1759. In 1832, he built this house and sold it after eight years for a hundred pounds. The Sumners continued to live in the house around the corner on William Street. William Sumner had been the proprietor of the Grove Inn in Nelson, which is now Burlington. Then he leased the Oakville House from his good friend, William Chisholm. It was located on the site of Paradiso Restaurant on Lakeshore Road. Sumner Street, which is the south side of George's Square, is named after him. Matilda Sumner, a daughter of William Sumner, married Samuel McGiffin, the brother of Captain John McGiffin, whom we met at the previous house. In 1873, they purchased 65 Navy Street, Matilda's childhood home. Unlike his brother and father, Samuel McGiffin was not a mariner, Rather, he was a hardware merchant. His store was in the original St. Jude's Church building after the church moved to its current location. It stood on the corner of Thomas Street and Lakeshore Road. It was torn down to make room for the Bank of Montreal, which then became the Anthropology Clothing Store. We have now arrived at the Canadian Hotel on the corner of Navy and Robinson. Prior to the hotel, the house of Captain Nicholas Boylan stood on this lot. He migrated to Upper Canada in 1821 and was one of the earliest settlers in Oakville. In 1830, he started working for William Chisholm as master of the telegraph. He commanded quite a number of of Chisholm vessels over the years. He was also one of the leading families behind the construction of St. Andrew's Catholic Church in 1840 at the corner of King and Reynolds Street. With the coming of the railway in 1855, there was increased demand for hotel rooms and John Williams, who now owned the Oakville House, and had built a second hotel near the train station, built this fine brick hotel. It had 21 bedrooms, many of them only six feet square, and four parlors. It passed through a number of owners, and in 1875 it was sold to John Anderson. In 1881, when the town voted on prohibition, it was owned by two women. It appears that some voters may have been influenced to vote for prohibition due to the uncontrolled drunken brawls 
in this hotel. George Sumner, the town's chief constable, remarked in his journal, that town is pretty quiet if it were not for the Canadian hotel. They keep up a continual noise, most disreputable for those who profess to be ladies. After the Scott Act brought prohibition to Oakville, he remarked, the Scott Act came into force today and all the hotels are closed up, both houses and sheds. People who came into town say they will not come again. After prohibition, the hotel was sold again, this time to Murray Williams, the nephew of the original owner, and was renamed the Murray House. Pause the video until you have safely crossed to the west side of Navy Street, just south of Robinson. We will now be headed back south toward the lake. You should be standing in front of an empty lot that provides a nice view of the granary and the harbour. Of course, it was not always empty. The McLean family owned this house first and they are the family in the photo. Then William Sherburn, a shoemaker, bought the house in 1850 and added an addition at the back to use as his shoe shop. In advertisements in 1854, Sherburn makes no mention of carrying ready-made shoes, but two years later, he announces that while continuing to sell handmade shoes, he also carries ready-made shoes and has over 1,000 pairs on offer from New York, proclaiming, great explosion, first selling at cost and cheaper than ever, Jerusalem. The original house was demolished in 1969 some longtime residents of Oakville will remember Shelley's Restaurant, a seafood restaurant that was established on this site by Klaus Dietzold. He came to Canada from Hamburg, Germany in 1965. The restaurant operated for over 20 years and was voted best seafood restaurant in Canada by American Express for five consecutive years. Moving to 68 Navy Street, we come to the home of Jeremiah Hageman, who came to Oakville in the 1850s and immediately set up a carriage making factory on the slope behind his home. At one time, he owned nearly this entire block of land. His Oakville Carriage Works Company took three prizes at the Agricultural Exhibition in Toronto in 1856 for the best two-horse pleasure carriage, the best two-horse pleasure sleigh, and the best two-horse wagon. Jeremiah Hageman also became involved in growing strawberries in Oakville. In 1869, one of his patches of strawberries yielded 2,200 quarts in one day. In that year, Oakville was estimated to have produced nearly 125 tons of strawberries. The home was sold to Benjamin Hegman in 1871, who was part owner of Gage and Hegman, a lumbering and flour milling company. In 1899, the lots were again sold, this time to Thomas Hegman, a carpenter who owned it until 1942. The house at 64 Navy Street bears the name of George King Chisholm, the oldest son of the founder of Oakville and the first mayor of the town. George was one of the first pupils of Upper Canada College and also served as the Sergeant at Arms of the Legislature of Upper Canada at the time of the 1837 Rebellion. There is some fragmentary evidence suggesting that this may have been a general retail store around 1875. However, this is not certain. Likely the first building on this site was a barn belonging to his father, William Chisholm. The area between William Street and King Street is now a small public park and the Oakville Lawn Bowling Club. You may wonder how these lands 
came to be public areas. William Chisholm, in his original plan for the town, designated this area to be the Market Square. He had also designated land for George's Square and the cemetery. When the Town Council of Oakville came into existence in 1857, they secured the title to the property and developed ambitious plans for a market building. However, they could not immediately carry out these plans and instead decided first to build a town lockup at a cost of $1,528 that could be turned later into a fire station. Prison cells were built on the lower floor and council chambers on the upper floor. In 1862, work on the larger market building was complete. It was two stories high, 84 feet by 36 feet, and was divided into market stalls on the main floor as well as the town armory at one end. The upper floor was an auditorium that could seat 500 people. This was also the site of an annual agricultural fair. The market building also became a place to temporarily house new immigrants who arrived by boat with little or no resources of their own. The lockup burned to the ground in 1876 and part of the market building was temporarily remodeled into a new lockup and council chambers. In 1885, it was further remodeled to include a fire bell and fire hall. The town hall building, as it became known, burned down in December 1913, destroying the town records and the original seal of the town. Pause the video and cross King Street Stop to read the Project Bookmark Canada plaque that was mentioned earlier in the tour. Then pass through the gates onto the Yerkles estate and restart the video. You are now in front of the coach house for the Yerkles estate, which is currently not in use. The plaque indicates that it was constructed at the request of Alan S. Chisholm. Alan was the son of George King Chisholm and became the leader of the family on his father's death. He wanted to reroute the driveway to the estate to exit onto King Street. His mother was vehemently opposed. So he arranged for her to go on an extended vacation and when she returned, the new driveway was complete. Town tradition says that Allen constructed the white gates that you just passed through. He was one of the founders of the tennis club in 1903, which became the Oakville Club five years later. We have this wonderful photo of Mr. Chisholm and his two-horse cart. But times were changing, and he and Murray Williams, who owned the Murray House Hotel, were the first two residents of Oakville to own automobiles. Continue along the pathway through the gardens of the Erkless Estate. The path will take you to the small brown cottage at the top of the ridge overlooking Sixteen Mile Creek and the location of the Oakville Historical Society. This building was originally two cottages built in 1952 for Julia Chisholm and Hazel Chisholm Matthews, great granddaughters of Oakville's founder, William Chisholm. We met these two women at the beginning of our tour as the two cute children living in Mount Vernon, the summer house in Lakeside Park. Their mother purchased the Erkless estate after the death of Alan Chisholm and removed the driveway he constructed through this garden. Hazel is the author of Oakville and the Sixteen, a wonderful history of Oakville and the source for much of the information in this walking tour. It is available for purchase at the Oakville Historical Society. The Society has been resident here since 1992. Please do drop in for a visit and to learn more and see our displays. Thank you for taking this tour.